Hello everyone, so this is my school profile SWOT analysis presentation for Education 590. In this presentation, I will provide background information on my chosen school, illustrate the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of the school using information I gathered online, as well as interviews from kindergarten teacher Mrs. C, fifth grade teacher Mrs. Solis, and SAI teacher Mrs. Bay, and then provide recommendations that support parents and the school and students as well. So I decided to choose Fred S. Grand Elementary School, which is located in San Dimas, and it is part of the Bonita Unified School District. This is the school where I was assigned at the beginning of this Credential and Master's program, and I've been able to volunteer in kindergarten, in fifth grade, as well as interview a variety of staff members. The principal of the school is Principal G. Wang, and the school serves students in TK through grade five, and there are a total of 453 students. And as you can see, based on the chart, the school is very diverse in regards to student demographics, socioeconomically disadvantaged students, ELLs, foster youth, and those who are homeless. So let's get into the SWOT analysis. First, in regards to strengths, Escran students in grades 3 through 5 have increased their Smarter Balance Summative Assessment scores from the 2017-2018 school year to the 2018-2019 school year. As you can see in the pie chart, the percentage of students meeting or exceeding standards in ELA has increased about 4%, and the percentage in math has increased about 11%, and that is very great. Other strengths of Escran Elementary is that in regards to awards and recognitions, it received the California Distinguished School Award in 2013. This school also prides itself for having modernized classrooms, which basically means that all the classrooms have smart boards, one-to-one -one iPads for students in grades kindergarten through two, and one-to-one -one Chromebooks for grades three through five. Another strength are that classroom resources and materials such as textbooks are current and are available for each student. When I interviewed Mrs. Solis and Mrs. C, they also both explained that Principal Wang has been a strong leader who is very supportive and often asks staff members for feedback. The school also has a good facility rating, which means that the school building is safe and meets regulations. Mrs. Solis also explained that a strength of Escrand Elementary is the school's student council, which is made up of elected fourth and fifth graders who meet weekly to plan events and fundraising. Both Mrs. C and Mrs. Solis stated that their school's behavior management system, PRIDE, has been beneficial to support students by acknowledging their hard work, where students can also receive PRIDE notes and also earn prizes as well. The school has seen also a decrease in the suspension rate from 3.1% during the 2017-2018 school year to 1.8% in the 2018-2019 school year. Escrand has also has a specialized academic instruction educator who is Mrs. Bay, and when I interviewed her last semester, she explained that the school places an emphasis on using funds to support neurodiverse students by providing assistant, assistive technology like dyslexia font on school computers, as well as flexible seating options. Mrs. Solis and Mrs. C believe that the teachers were a strength at the school. Since this is a Title I school, both teachers say that the teachers and just staff members supported students emotionally and provided snacks for those who are hungry. This school is also very diverse with students speaking about 14 different languages. Lastly, Mrs. Solis said that the PTA has been fantastic at providing fundraising ideas to support school projects and initiatives. Now let's talk about Escran's weaknesses. First, the school has low academic performance compared to the district. As you can see from the chart, Escran's percentages for meeting or exceeding standards in ELA and math were lower than the district. 
Also, when I interviewed Mrs. Solis, she explained that since Escrand is the lowest performing school in the district, the school has a negative reputation from parents and the community. The school also has poor attendance, and increases in absenteeism has continued to be a problem even during the 2018 and 2019 school year. Another weakness is the large class sizes for 4th and 5th grade. Mrs. Solis explained that she had 36 students for the 2018-2019 school year, which impacted her ability to meet the needs of all learners, including those with ADHD, dyslexia, and autism. It also had a large number of students in the 2019-2020 school year as well. The fourth and fifth grade classrooms are also weaknesses of the school because they are in small trailers with no windows, which could be a safety concern. The school's technology has also not been updated in a while because it is very difficult to keep up with the changing technology. And also the school counselor has not been able to come full time and this has affected um, students because not all of them have been able to meet with her on a regular basis. Now for opportunities. There are many different opportunities of the school. Students and staff can receive different types of counseling services from Tri-City and McKinley Mental Health Services. Escrand also has a mentoring program called Zoo Chai in which representatives come to the school and offer sessions or classes uh, weekly. And the school also has received many grants of $400 from the Laverne and San Dimas Educational Foundation to classroom teachers who apply. The school also has a close connection with the San Dimas Police Department. In the upper grades, a deputy sheriff often visits classrooms to present lessons on self-esteem, bullying, substance use, and abuse, and peer pressure. The Benita Unified School District has also provided assistance to the school. In regards to COVID, the, teach, the district has distributed over 60,000 meals to families beginning in late March and also has distributed about 2,500 Chromebooks to families who do not have computers at home and also offers counseling services. And then the district during the school year um, offers um, funding so that the school can have before and after school child care, SAI instruction, and speech. So regarding threats, one of the biggest has been the COVID-19 pandemic. The coronavirus definitely has left parents, students, and staff members with health concerns. And in regards to thinking about the next school year, what steps will be taken to ensure the health and safety of everyone on campus, like students, families, and staff. And this has also led to distance learning, which can definitely be a challenge for veteran teachers who are not as tech savvy as younger teachers, and also can be an issue for families who don't have internet access or technology at home. Another threat is declining enrollment, which is caused by the negative reputation from the community and which can also be caused by COVID-19 because some parents might choose to homeschool their children for the upcoming school year. Societal concerns is another threat because parents and guardians at the school may have been negatively impacted by COVID-19, which has led to poverty and or unemployment. Mrs. C stated that the rapid change of technology is another major threat. Lastly, future budget cuts can negatively impact the school due to a declining enrollment, and less enrollment might mean less funding, which impacts school initiatives, projects, and just hurts the overall educational experience for students and staff. So now in regards to my recommendations, for each recommendation, I have two um, alternatives, either school site if we're returning back to school, or distance learning. So first, for helping the school improve its reputation, Escrand Elementary should plan with the help of their student council to create three multiple scale or small scale events throughout the 2020-2021 school year using social distancing guidelines. And the event would be basically called what Escrand is all about, where students in each grade would showcase work and speak about what they love most about the school. Parents and community members would be welcome.
An alternative for distance learning would be that S Grand Elementary should provide professional development training in using Web 2.0 technology like blogs, websites, YouTube channels, interactive newsletters to provide images, videos, and updates about classroom projects and lessons, as well as academic progress within the first three months of school. So hopefully by showing parents, community members, or any other guardians what the school's about and what they do in the classrooms, hopefully it will increase um, and allow the school to have a better reputation. For increasing academic performance, S Grand Elementary should enforce teachers to attend three staff development days during multimodal instructional activities to assist students in the classroom during the 2020 and 21 school year. In addition, teachers should conduct progress monitoring assessments before the end of each semester and analyze the data with their grade level teams to develop plans to increase ELA and math achievement, which would then be submitted to the school principal. And this could also be used during distance learning through online assessments, Zoom or WebEx meetings, and communication through email using the same timeline. So for this recommendation, by using more multimodal instructional activities, strategies, which research has shown increases academic achievement, and by being held accountable to use and analyze data, hopefully teachers can determine what they need to do to help increase the academic performance of their students. For updating technology, Eskrin Elementary should research new iPad apps to add to the school iPads or update Chromebook software within the first two months of the 2020-2021 school year. And for distance learning, during online instruction, teachers should introduce and use new technological apps for the same school year. So for this, hopefully the school is able to update their iPads and Chromebooks and have students use more updated apps and websites that really help them engage and develop their 21st century skills. For COVID-19, Eskran Elementary and the Bonita Unified School District need to create guidelines for instruction for the next school year following CDC guidelines by August of 2020 before the upcoming school year. The district and website should include information regarding the type of instruction and social distancing guidelines to inform parents and guardians. So with this recommendation, by having succinct and clear guidelines on the school and district website, this will encourage parents to allow their children back to school and also increase enrollment. And lastly, for reducing absenteeism, Eskrin Elementary should create Saturday fun days where students who are absent have the opportunity to make up their absences by engaging in themed Saturday schools, which occur monthly during the 2020-2021 school year. And these classes would also follow social distancing guidelines. And for distance learning, you could also have a virtual Saturday fun day which would also occur using the same timeline. For this strategy or recommendation, by creating really fun ideas, like maybe having a STEM theme Saturday school or a, Zoom theme, a zoo theme Saturday school, hopefully this will increase students um, so that they're not missing school as much, increase academic achievement, and it might also increase funding if they're able to um, have more students um, not skip or miss school. And here are my references. So I really hope that you learned more about S Grand Elementary and all about what a SWOT analysis truly entails. Thank you.